Hello. Welcome to the weekly top 10 news brought to you by Solarica, the world's first online community dedicated to solar energy in this week's news. While Indonesia and Uruguay join the solar revolution with new announcements, Africa finds successful rural business model with solar lanterns and the growth of solar PV projects in US and India continues to make big news in the last two weeks. The European Commission has initiated the registration of all solar products imported from China with immediate effect. Importers of solar modules, cells and solar wafers must from now on specify at customs whether the products were imported from China or were produced mainly in China. Importers may have to pay duties on these products if retroactive measures are imposed by the Commission. The Commission will announce in early June whether to apply provisional anti-dumping duties on Chinese products and by early August on whether to impose preliminary countervailing levies. The duties would apply for five years. If tariffs are imposed, they can be collected 90 days retroactively, therefore from March 2013. In an attempt to attract more private investors in the development of solar energy, the government will set a feed-in tariff for electricity produced by solar power plants. The tariff will be as high as 25 cents per kilowatt-hour, Finance Minister Agus Martel Wardijo said after a meeting with several other ministers. The development of solar power facilities would still be conducted through a competitive bidding process and the electricity generated will be purchased by the state utility firm PLN as the development is still being handled through competitive bidding, the price level could be lower than the 25 cents per kilowatt hour. The tariff would then be reduced in stages after 20 years of operation AGA said the tariff was expected to encourage private investors to develop solar power plants in remote areas of Indonesia. He added that the government, with the assistance of PLN, had identified several regions where the feed-in tariff would be applied. The government of India has announced plans to adopt a viability gap funding model for the second phase of its Jawaharlal Nehru National Solar Mission. Under this proposed model, the government will provide financing in the form of grants to grid-connected solar power projects starting June this year. In comparison, under the first phase of the solar emission program, the government had adopted a reverse auction model whereby it would select solar power projects based on lowest tariffs. In a separate announcement, the Indian government also revealed that more than 50,000 jobs had been created in the country in the last three years in the renewable energy sector along with the aggressive growth of solar power generation plants. National budget deficit concerns are, however, throwing the viability of the National Solar Emission Program into question. Meanwhile, business consulting firm Frost & Sullivan estimates the Indian solar market will be worth 2.05 billion US dollars in 2013, up from 1.05 billion US dollars last year. All new single-family homes in a California city could be required to have solar PV systems thanks to a new directive from Republican Mayor Rex Paris of Lancaster. This rule applies to all new single-family homes built after January 1, 2014. Homes on lots over 7,000 square feet will have to have a system of 1 to 1.5 kilowatts. Alternatively, this requirement can be foregone if homes purchase solar energy credits. This legislation is the first of its kind in the U.S and is part of the city's municipal code for residential zones. The draft document of this legislation is currently open for public review. The government of Uruguay celebrated the country's first solar power plant at an inauguration ceremony held last week. Owned by Uruguay's energy regulator DNE, the 481-kilowatt installation has been constructed alongside the Salto Grande hydroelectric dam near the border with Argentina. Electricity generated from the facility will be fed into the national grid and will be enough to power 200 homes. The facility was financed by a donation of 7 million US dollars from the government of Japan. The remaining 3 million US dollars has already been earmarked for a second PV plant for a holiday park located in Minas de Corrales. Alta Devices disclosed that it has reached 30.8% solar cell efficiency with its dual-junction solar cell technology. This new record has been verified by the U.S. Department of Energy's National Renewable Energy Laboratory. 
The new efficiency beats the company's own former record of 28.2% and shows off the company's new technology that stacks two layers of semiconductors on top of each other in order to boost a cell's performance. This dual junction design, which involves a layer of gallium arsenide and a layer of indium gallium phosphide, differs from the single junction cell that it's been making. Founded in 2007, Alta is using gallium arsenide, which is more expensive than common solar cell materials such as silicon or cadmium telluride. But gallium arsenide contains properties that make it possible to convert a higher percentage of sunlight into electricity. The company's long-term target is to create multigenocytin cells with 38% efficiency. SolarAid, a British charity, has announced that sales of its solar lights to the African market will exceed 320,000, forecasting 3.14 million US dollars by the end of March this year. The charity's aim is to eradicate the need for kerosene for lighting from Africa by 2020 by bringing light to nearly 60 million African households. From April 2011 to March 2012 SolarAid sold 51,811 units which rose to 228,000 at the end of 2012, beating last year's sales by almost 600%. By finding a route to mass market in Africa, it claims it is on course to make solar lanterns an everyday household item. SolarAid states that only 9% of people in rural sub-Saharan Africa have access to electricity, which leaves over 90% in poverty, spending up to 30% of their income on toxic kerosene for lighting. SolarAid research demonstrates that solar lights will give a return on investment in as little as five weeks, thereafter freeing up valuable money for food, medicines, education and investments in business. According to the latest report by the Solar Energy Industry Association, the U.S. cumulative PV capacity has reached 7.7 .7 gigawatts last year. The year 2012 was a record year for U.S. solar PV installations that grew by 76% over 2011, to a record-breaking total 90,000 installations or 3.31 gigawatts in 2012, with an estimated market value of 11.5 billion U.S. dollars. There were 16 million solar panels installed in the U.S. last year. There were 152 utility installations in 2012 and 8 of the 10 largest U.S. solar projects operating today were completed last year, representing 54% of total installed capacity, or 1.78 gigawatts. Overall, there is a utility pipeline with PPA secured, totaling 10.5 gigawatts, of which 31.5 gigawatts are under construction. The non-residential market namely commercial, governmental, and non-profit systems grew by 26% or 1.043 gigawatts installed over 2011. The U.S. Secretary of the Interior, Ken Salazar has given the go-ahead for two photovoltaic projects worth 900 MW in California. Salazar approved the two photovoltaic projects last week in San Francisco, the 750MW McCoy Solar Energy Project and the 150MW Desert Harvest Solar Farm. Both projects are located in California's Riverside East Solar Energy Zone, an area identified as most suitable for solar development and established through the Western Solar Energy Plan. The approved projects underwent extensive environmental review and public comment. The companies agreed to undertake significant mitigation efforts to minimize the impact to wildlife, water, historical, cultural and other resources. Indian solar project developer Wellspun Energy has secured financing for what it claims is India's largest solar farm, a 130 megawatts project in Mansoor, Madhya Pradesh. The company has obtained financing of Rs 885 crores or 161 million US dollars for the project, which it successfully bid for in May 2012. Construction is already in progress and is slated to be commissioned by May 2014. Central Bank of India has been appointed the lead lender and facility agent for the consortium of financiers who backed the project. The company claims its project will meet the state of Madhya Pradesh's annual power deficit of 17.9%, which is enough electricity to power more than 600,000 homes, 